Sass Press. Welcome back to the Introvert Circus. And I hope that you and your dogs are having a fantastic week. Today we are going to do another plan with me. We haven't done one of these in a little while. I am super excited to get working on that. Um, it has been a really exciting couple of weeks. If you haven't seen our latest video, definitely go check it out. Sirius earned her grand champion trick dog title, the very fancy ribbon for it actually came in the mail last week and it is right there, but I have her grand champion title up here on YouTube so you can watch that if you have not already. So, so proud of her. We also found out she is the first Newfoundland to earn the title, which is really amazing anywhere in the world. Uh, so I'm just beyond proud of her and so excited um, that we were able to add that grand champion ribbon and title to her name really proud of her. So that's been a big thing I've been focused on in terms of training and getting things ready. Um, but now I want to get this next week started and organized. So this is my dog training planner. If you have been around here, you've seen this before. I released it in January. Uh, it is undated. If you're new and have not seen it, it is undated. So you can pick it up and start at any time. It is available for $9.99 as a print copy um, on Amazon. There's also a link in the description box below if you want the PDF downloadable um, version so you can use it digitally or print it out. I've seen people do really cool things like laminating it, putting it on their fridge, all kinds of stuff. All those links are always in the description box below. But I wanted to get planning for this week and talk to you about what my strategy, what we're focused on, and some exciting things that are happening. So I'm gonna get planning. If you have not already, please subscribe. Really working on growing this channel. Um, so subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, good stuff like that, you know, the youtube -y things I'm supposed to tell you to do. But in the meantime, let's get planning. All right, so I have us opened to a new week. I'm using these really cute dog bookmarks, or um, not bookmarks, paper clips. I just think it's fun. I'm also gonna lay out just a little bit of decorative washi tape. You do not have to do this, but you know, it just makes me happy. I love seeing what people are doing with stickers in there, washi tape, all that stuff. It's just fun. So I have this um, dog themed one that just says rough wolf, bow wow, etc. So I'm just gonna use the straight edge of my ruler to cut it, Not that one on the bottom. And then I think I'm gonna use this, oh, I didn't show you. It is, it came in like a kit from Michael's several years ago. And then this one is just some cute little dogs. So I'm gonna pop that along the top border of the planner. And then we'll chat about our plans for the week. So I guess I should have used this one on the bottom because there's a bigger space. That's fine. And there's no wrong way to plan. And that includes decorative planning, not decorative planning. Oh, it does fit, okay. Oh, it's all about what feels fun and enjoyable for you. All right, so did that. I'm gonna go back in and put my, I love these. I got these years ago and they're just some of my favorite office supplies. All right, get that back in. And I love how flat this lays for being able to plan even pretty far into the planner already. So this is, what is this week? Let me get my phone. This is, the week of the 12th through the 18th. All right, so this is April 12th through 18. And we have really exciting things happening this week. Um, and that means that my training goal is going to be actually slow and steady. And that will make a little more sense in a minute, but we have some exciting things happening and I'm definitely somebody who can get overly excited and I wanna make sure that I am going uh, just really slow and steady, slow and steady, and I'm gonna put parentheses foundations. And by what I mean by that will make sense. I think in a minute, but you know, it can be easy to get really excited and push and get things, try to get things really quickly. And that doesn't always work the best, isn't always what's best for our dogs um, in terms of sort of long-term mastering of something. And I know that it's my job to remind people about that all the time. And I think sometimes we all need that reminder. And so I just really want to center that for myself this week 
The skills we're gonna work on um, are, and this will all make sense in a minute, are names. I am working on teaching her the names of different toys. Um, you're gonna do pause up, which she knows really well, but I wanna find, I'm gonna kind of do a modification of, um, there is a activity uh, that I do called the pause up challenge. It's actually in my book to this journal uh, that just released this year also from uh, Mango Publishing. It's such a fun book, but one of the things we do in here, one of the activities is the pause up challenge and uh, I'm doing a modification version of that this week. I wanna pick different objects every day for her to do. So names, pause up. Uh, we're working on verbals. So how many trick cues does she have just on verbal alone? Uh, we are working on weaves because the weather is gorgeous and we have our weave pulls out in the backyard uh, and her weaves are pretty rocking, but I'm working on weave pull entries specifically. That's something she doesn't have a ton of experience with. Um, hold, which she does know really well, um, but I want to continue to diversify the kinds of things she's holding. Uh, so I worked on that to prep for like the Easter basket, but I want to just have like a different array of things. Um, why am I getting ads on my watch? Stop it. Um, that she will, that knows how to comfortably hold and sequences. So putting more tricks together into, um, a flow and sequence. That's something that's just always fun to work on and grooming doesn't go there. Oh, we did. This is Tuesday when I'm filming this. We walked yesterday. We did not do names yesterday. We did pause up yesterday. We did verbals yesterday. We did weaves yesterday. We didn't do holds and we did some sequencing yesterday. It is Tuesday morning, so we have not. She's like laying out there, right, like right off camera watching me. Um, and then um, for this side, I kind of do kind of the same things. I'm doing supplements. She just had both days. Uh, we are doing um, stretches yesterday and we're doing focus games which we have done both today okay so what is my plan this week this is my plan these are all of the things we're going to be working on and part of what we're doing is in prep for some work that she's going to be doing that I'm going to be doing um, that I'm really excited about um, I am was really hoping this video was going to get interrupted recording that probably isn't going to happen I'm in the delivery window right now for uh, a really cool thing that's coming in the mail. Um, Sirius and I are going to have the chance to try out one of the Bunch Bicycle canine um, e-cargo bikes. So if you don't follow my other social media, though you should, and you should really follow Sirius's Instagram. Um, I love, love, love biking. I never learned how to drive. I never had a driver's license. So um, my main form of transportation if my partner is not driving is my um bike and i have an e-assist bike which is super helpful on all the portland hills i love it love it love it and so when i saw that bunch bikes had released a cargo bike that was designed for very large dogs to get to safely ride like strapped in i was so excited uh and so they're actually sending one for sirius and i to try out um, for some upcoming articles that I'm working on and for her Instagram. So we're getting to try it and it's getting delivered via freight sometime this morning. And I'm really, really, really excited about it. And at the same time, Sirius is incredible. And she's also a dog that who is a little bit, can be a little spooky or a little wary. She kind of has two perspectives about things. She can be absolutely wild and reckless with her body um or she can be nervous and she's a little bit of like a horse in that way so i know that she's probably going to be spooky about the bike because it's going to look weird and different from a regular bike she is going to be a little uncertain about it moving under her um even just getting into it it's pretty st stable from what i've seen so that's why we're working on pause up again she knows pause up really well but we're working on pause up in different situations and then getting into it so i want to read that main foundation goal slow and steady what i do not want to do is have her jump into it and be like yeah we're good to go and then not have done the foundation training ahead of time for her to be really really secure comfortable and understand what the experience is like of being in the bike so 
that's why I am putting that reminder for myself is probably not have to worry about it. I suspect she's going to be like, whoa, what is this? And we're actually going to have to like warm up to it. But she surprises me every single day. And so even if she's like, yes, I'm jazzed, let's go. What I want to do is put in that slow intentional training time this week, possibly for a few weeks to really, depending on what her perspective is, to make sure she's completely solid, comfortable, understands what this experience is going to be before I set off like on my bicycle with my dog. Uh, so that's the reminder for myself to really, really focus on my dog, to focus on staying steady, to really work those foundations because that's what's going to pay off in the long run of this being an enjoyable um, recreational experience for us that we can replicate and that I won't have to go back and train um, things later because I pushed or rushed those foundations. So that's the reminder for myself with that. And I, you know, obviously this is specific to like, we're getting to try this cool e-bike, um, but it's true in all situations. There can be such a rush. I see this so often. And it's always been the thing. I remember my God, 20 plus years ago when I started in agility, you know, people would come to agility and the first thing they would ask is when can I compete? When can I compete? And I get it. It's exciting. People want ribbons. I get it. Um, but that's it. what happens is people will rush those foundations to get to the end result um, that they think they want. And then they end up finding out that they have to go back and retrain contacts, retrain leaf poles, retrain whatever it is um, that is more technical because they were in such a hurry to get um, to the finish line, so to speak, um, that they rushed those foundations. And it's fine. Like we all, you know, like as long as the dog isn't traumatized, isn't scared, whatever. Like, you know, I always tell people compete when you're, when you are ready to compete. And, you know, as long as you're ready to, um, know that your dog might like blow you off in the ring and, um, that fine, it's your entry fee. That's totally okay. I'm definitely not one of those trainers that thinks that you have to wait until you're, you know, like all things are like, <laughs> guaranteed perfect because there is no guarantees you know the first time Sirius um went into the rally ring I was really just there to have fun and for experience I knew that it was going to be a very different environment for her I was completely fine that um we were not going to cue that day and we didn't cue that day she had a great time that was my only goal so when I say that you know like focus on the foundations focus on the foundations I'm not saying you know only, only, you know, focus on foundations forever. Cause I see people that get stuck in that trap too, where they're like, they're never good enough. Their dog is never going to be good enough. So they never enter. They never, you know, go for that trick title, whatever it is. That's not what I'm saying at all. You know, what I'm saying is focus on fun. Make sure you are all having fun. That's the most important thing. Uh, it's something that I talk a lot about, um, into this journal and also in my book tricks in the city with teaching these tricks. This isn't about perfectionism. This is about fun. That said, make sure you've laid those, those ground rules for yourself of the focus on those foundations. Make sure those are solid with your dog, that you're not like, oh, my dog is kind of worried about this, but I'm going to push on anyway. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is make sure you're moving at your dog's pace. You're meeting your dogs where they're at and that you're ensuring that you are both ready to go to the next level, whatever that is for you. So that's the reminder for me this week. I'm super excited about the bike. And I know that it's something that will be a little different for her. And mostly the reminder for me is that she's a unique dog. All of our dogs are unique individuals. And um, in particular, my two dogs that passed, my senior dogs that passed in the last uh, year and a half were both dogs who would have immediately been very, very comfortable with the bike because they're dogs who were really into um, being on things that move. They're not dogs that had knee surgery. They're not, they were not giant dogs. Uh, and so I just knew from carts and boats and things that both of those dogs did, this would have been just a very natural, like, oh, okay, it's another thing that moves. Mostly also because they were much, much older and that foundation work had already been laid. Uh, so this is the reminder for me that she's still, even though she's four, she's still learning all of those foundation pieces about things that move in large part because there's just fewer things that she fits on that are going to move. So unlike my smaller dogs who had like been on boats and been on floaties and the water and all kinds of things because it was very easy to put smaller dogs, wagons, things like that. Um, she just doesn't have that same foundation skill yet. So I need to teach her that now 
and then I think she's gonna love it. So that's my big training plan for the week. Let me know what you are working on with your dogs this week. If you um, have the planner, definitely tag me on uh, Instagram or Facebook, uh, post it in our training group on Facebook, any of that stuff. I'd love to see what your weekly spread looks like, what you're working on, and I will see you again in another video very, very soon. I hope you and your dogs have a fantastic week. Again, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.